gathered this night in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. They cried to the Lord in their troubles, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and loving in all his works. The Lord upholds all who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord sustains them on their sick bed and ministers to them in their illness. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. We are made God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth, in your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Psalm 37. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land, and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. I have been young, and now am old. 
Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They're ever giving liberally and lending and their children become a blessing. Depart from evil and do good, for you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his faithful ones. The righteous shall be kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak justice. The law of their God is in their hearts. They step, do not slip. The wicked watch for the righteous and seek to kill them. The Lord will not abandon them to their power or let them be condemned when they are brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep to his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on the destruction of the wicked. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, if anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise this day. We give you thanks for the rain that's refreshing the earth, for the sun that shines between the gray clouds. We thank you for this opportunity to stop for just a moment to calm our hearts and our thoughts, that we might hear your word of peace for us this night. Lord, these are anxious times. There are times that we're searching for answers, that we're not sure of timelines or places or things happening around us. And so help us to rest in your presence and give us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray, and together we say, Amen. Well, during our midweek times together, we are focusing on the Psalms, and tonight we're looking at Psalm 37. Now, Psalm 37, we're told in one of the verses, was written by a community elder. It has been said that David wrote these verses when he was an old man. These words of wisdom, you might say. Now, the psalm was written as an acrostic poem. In Hebrew, each verse begins with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So it was a little bit of fun mixed into these instructions. Now this psalm is a list of do's and don'ts, words of wisdom to help us through a difficult time. So let's dig in. 
These first 11 verses walk us through the list, beginning with two important don'ts. Do not fret and do not be envious. It's easy to get caught up in the moment. It's easy to let anxiety and worry spin out of control. It is easy to let others drag us down the river of denial. It may seem that the infamous they have so much more. They have it easier, they have it better. But our author tonight begins with a flat out directive. Do not fret, do not be envious. Why? Because eventually they will fade and they will wither away like herbs. They may be in the spotlight for this moment, but down the road, they will fade and be withered. But next comes the affirmative. Trust, do good, take delight, commit. Trust again, be still, and wait patiently. Years ago, I was going through a difficult period, and the words I were given in prayer was rest in God's presence. Nothing more, simple words. I had been so busy worrying and making lists of pros and cons, talking to my mentor, looking at all the options that were before me, that I forgot to remember God. Now, I knew God had placed people into my life to walk with me, but I forgot to be still. I forgot to rest in God's presence and wait patiently. Let's look a little closer. Trust in the Lord and do good. We need to practice in trusting our entire lives to God, not when it's convenient, but every moment. Our families, our jobs, our possessions, Believing God cares for us better than we can care for ourselves. In the small catechism, Luther writes in the meaning of the first article of the Apostles' Creed, I believe that God has created me together with all that exists. God has given me and still preserves my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all limbs and senses, reasons, and all mental faculties. In addition, God daily and abundantly provides shoes and clothing, food and drink, house and farm, spouse and children, fields, livestock, and all property, along with all the necessities and nourishment for this body and life. God protects me against all danger and shields and preserves me from all evil. And all this is done out of pure, fatherly, and divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness of mine at all. For all of this, I owe it to God to thank and praise, serve and obey. This is most certainly true. Now, if we believe that God does all of this out of pure goodness and love, then why is it so hard for us to accept it, to believe it? Why do we resist and succumb to the temptation of thinking that we know better? Why do we get caught up in our own anxiety and try to do it all on our own? And the answer is not an easy one, but it is this. Because in all of those gifts, God also gifts us with free will. We are not puppets on a string. God is not a puppet master or a Dungeons and Dragons master moving us around in the make-believe kingdom. But God created us. God gifts us. God asks that we trust and do good, but ultimately the choice is ours to make. And trusting God with our whole lives is not easy, but we can practice one day at a time, one moment at a time. When there is a choice, we can choose how we will respond. We can choose to whom we will listen. We can choose God we can choose to trust God with our entire lives for the long run. So trust, do good, take delight, commit, be still, wait patiently. That wait patiently is a hard one for me, especially now. But if we are focusing on God's love and tender care, waiting becomes a little easier. Obsessing, on the other hand, will lead us to unhappiness. 
In our gospel reading from Luke, Jesus tells us, love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And that's not easy. Love your enemies. Really, Jesus, do good? Expect nothing in return? Not easy, Jesus. But this is exactly what this psalm is reminding us. Anger, rage, envy are all destructive emotions. Putting ourselves before others leads to heartache. Maybe not ours, but others. On Monday, I overheard a conversation. I was in a place that required face masks. And a woman was arguing that she didn't have one to wear. It was her right not to wear one. The supervisor kindly offered her one for free. The woman protested it was her right to not wear it. The supervisor explained that it was not intended to hurt her, but to care for all of those who were in the room. The woman protested it was her right. The supervisor, with a deep sigh, replied, yes, it is your right, but I have the right to care for all of these other people now here's the catch. I was there to give blood to help save lives. She was there to give blood to help save lives. I tuned out the rest of the conversation and I went on reading and these words were next. Do not fret, refrain from anger. Now David reminds the people that as long as Israel was obedient, there was enough for everyone. But when Israel forgets God, the rich take care of themselves, and the poor and the innocent suffer. As we learn to lean into God, as we learn to trust God with our whole lives, we learn again and again that God is faithful always. To live to the Lord is to trust in God's promises. It is to have an identity as God's beloved children. It is to have a place where we call home knowing that God's promises are and will be kept. The psalm goes on reminding us again to depart from evil, to do good, to wait, to keep on the right pathway. And the psalmist closes with this reminder that the Lord is our refuge in times of trouble, that salvation comes from the Lord, that the Lord will rescue us and save us. If we simply take refuge by resting in God's presence. So this week, let me encourage you to take time out. Read through this psalm again and again. And as you dwell in the word, may you find rest and reassurance for your soul. Amen. As we join in prayer, each petition will end through Jesus Christ our Lord, and I invite you to respond, Amen. Let us pray for the world. Merciful Lord, you sent your Son to be our peace. Help all who suffer pain or grief find in Christ Jesus strength and peace so that their trust in your promises may be renewed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for recovery from sickness. O God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of sufferers, mercifully hear our prayers and grant to your servants the help of your power, that their sickness may be turned into health and our sorrow into joy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in affliction. Almighty and everlasting God, comfort of the sad and strength of those who suffer, let the prayers of your children rise to you. To everyone in distress, grant mercy, grant relief, grant refreshment, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who minister in healing. 
Almighty God, source of all human knowledge and skill, guide physicians and nurses, medical staff and mental health providers, and all those you have called to practice the arts of healing. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, that by their ministries the health of all people may be promoted and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for first responders. Almighty God, guardian and protector, shelter all those who continue to respond to our needs and care for the sick and injured. Grant them health and safety throughout these and every day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the ministry of family and friends. Loving God, our Creator and Redeemer, give strength and gentleness, patience and faithfulness to family members and friends. Let their hope be in you, and by their ministry of love, let your love be known. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Lord, we ask your loving care and protection for those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, and who desire our prayers. Take from them all fears and help them put their trust in you, that they may feel your strong arms around them. Touch them with your renewing love, that they may know wholeness in you and glorify your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all those making decisions. O Lord our God, send your Holy Spirit to guide us, that we may make our decisions with love, mercy, and reverence for your gift of life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Almighty God and Father, who sent your Son to live among us and to bring us your salvation. Blessed be God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, incomparable Son of the Father. You humbled yourself to share in our humanity, and you came to heal all our illnesses. Blessed be God. Praise to you, Holy Spirit, our Defender and Counselor. You heal our sickness with your mighty and life-giving power. Blessed be God. Holy and blessed Trinity, sustain your servants with your presence, drive away their sickness of body and spirit, and give them that victory of life and peace which will enable them to serve you now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.